the most important laser parameters is the generated radiation wavelengths. The laser application field depends on the laser wavelengths. Lasers are used in various fields such as medicine, security and monitoring systems. Why does a laser have this or that wavelength parameter? To understand that, you need to refer to the physics of the radiation process. Any type of radiation is characterized by the energy transportation from a radiating physical system to a receiving physical system. Every material body with a temperature above absolute zero radiates or absorbs energy. Consequently, all the bodies you deal with in everyday life continuously exchange energy. Therefore, radiation being one of the qualitative varieties of energy is a measure of motion of matter, an objective reality that exists outside and independent of our consciousness. Radiation as a special form of matter has a dual nature. It possesses wave and corpuscular properties. Particles of matter under certain conditions can be converted into radiation and radiation into particles of matter. The nature of radiation is associated with an atomic and molecular process in substances in their all aggregate states. The sources of radiation are atoms and molecules. The energy of these elementary emitters can only vary by jumps, divisible by a certain value of h bar v constant for given radiation frequency. Planck called this smallest dose of energy of the elementary emitter the quantum of energy in equation E equal h bar multiply v, where h bar is the Planck constant and v is a frequency of the speed light. In accordance with the law of quantum mechanics, the electron energy bound in an atom as well as an atom energy cannot take random values. It has a certain discrete series of values E0, E1, E2, etc. called energy levels. The level with the lowest energy of the atom E0 is called the ground level. The remaining levels E1, E2, etc. corresponding to the higher energy of atom when the atom is excited. Under certain conditions, an electron can make an abrupt transition from one energy level to another. With similar quantum transitions between the energy levels, let's say m and n, the atom emits or absorbs electromagnetic waves in certain portions, energy quantum. The frequencies of electromagnetic waves in quantum transitions are determined by Niels Bohr's second postulate. This equation connects the wave and quantum properties of radiation. When an atom absorbs the photon h bar v n m, the energy of the atom increases by this amount. Then there is an electron transition from the lower energy level e m to the upper energy level e n. The electron must turn to the lower energy level e m to emit the photon h v n m. This means the loss of energy for an atom. If we refer the above to a semiconductor laser, then the considered energy is the energy difference in the semiconductor between the conduction bands and the valence band. A laser diode, as well as any diode semiconductor, which is characterized by the presence of a valence band, a conduction band, and a forbidden band called zone. These bands or zones characterize the distribution of electrons on orbitals of the atom. At absolute zero, there is no electrons in the conduction band. Increasing the temperature increases the energy of the system. This contributes to the thermal generation of charge carriers. Electrons that have received energy equal to or greater than the width of the forbidden band are transferred to the conduction band and become free. The formation of a free electron entails the formation of an electron hole pair. A vacant place is formed at the site of the released electron. 
electrons and holes formed as a result of generation perform thermal motion in a semiconductor crystal for a certain period of time called the lifetime. The transition of a free electron back to the lower level is called a recombination. This transition is of particular interest because in this case the electron loses energy and this transition can be radioactive with the energy of the emitted photon E equal h bar v or non-radiative with the conversion of the energy into heat. The plurality of the radiative transitions at a given period of time is laser radiation. Thus, the frequency of light or the wavelengths of the laser radiation is determined by the width of the forbidden band in a semiconductor crystal. In the previous equation, there are two constant h bar and c and two proportional quantities e and lambda. There is the wavelengths can be changed by changing the energy of the forbidden band. Is it possible to make the structure of the conductor change the width of the forbidden zone? You need to introduce a certain number of foreign atoms. This will lead to a significant change in its electronical properties. Impurities contribute to the narrowing of the band gap due to the appearance of additional energy levels. Thus, decrease in the energy of the band gap promotes the growth of the wavelengths. So here is a picture we want to show you. Shows the spectral characteristics of the laser diode made of semiconductor materials of additional component called gallium. Look at this picture, we have all gallium and by adding gallium we can change the wavelengths 